Good evening, and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Jenna Flanagan. According to the Centers for Disease Control, in its 13 years of monitoring the flu, this is the first time every part of the continental U.S. has shown widespread activity. We are in an epidemic. Here in New York City, we've seen a staggering increase in hospitalizations, but thankfully, fewer few diagnoses. According to the New York State Department of Health, from October 1st of 2017 through January 13th of this year, 5,892 New York City residents have contracted the illness. That's 378 fewer cases than last season. But 2,165 people have been admitted to hospitals, and that's 359 more. Now, these are all lab-confirmed cases, which means the actual numbers could be even higher, as many New Yorkers choose to suffer at home without seeing a doctor. And here with tips on how you can protect yourself against getting this season's flu is Dr. Dimitri Daskalakis. So, doctor, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So, there's so many questions about the flu this season. First and foremost, let's get out of the way. What is the difference between the cold and the flu? Because a lot of people have a hard time telling the difference. Yeah, this is a great question. So you'll know if you have the flu generally because it tends to be a pretty severe illness. The flu is caused by just a few viruses. They're flu viruses. Mm -hmm. Colds are caused by many, many, many varieties of viruses. Colds can, you know, have upper respiratory symptoms like sneezing and coughing. So can the flu. But the flu tends to also have higher fevers, muscle aches, fatigue. It can knock you out for three or four days and can come can actually lead to some pretty significant complications if you have a weakened immune system. Well, of course, there's always a big push to get the flu shot in October, but is it too late in the season to get the flu shot? Never too late to get the flu shot. So if you haven't gotten it yet, it's important to do it. There's different strains of flu that will circulate at different times of the year. So if you get the flu shot and you get the flu, you tend to have a less severe version of the flu. So that's pretty good. So the flu shot can prevent um, hospitalizations, other complications of the flu. So even if it doesn't prevent you from getting it, it can prevent you from getting extraordinarily sick from it. Well, that's interesting because one of the pushbacks that I often hear when people give the reasons for not wanting to get the flu shot is that, well, if I get the shot, I get sick. So there's really no point in getting the flu shot. Is that fair? I talk to my patients about this all the time, which is when do you get the flu shot? October, November, December. What happens October, November, December? Common colds. Like, so there's there's colds that circulate, other viruses circulate, and everybody will get the flu shot. Then some people will get a cough or a, snip, uh, a sneeze or a sniffle, and they'll say, oh, I got the flu. That's not the flu. So the flu shot doesn't have active virus. It can't give you the flu. It's not alive. Um, can a, a, a vaccine cause a little arm pain, maybe make you feel a little bit fatigued the next day, sure, but that's not the flu. How contagious is the flu? How is it transmitted? Yeah, so um, the flu is transmitted, well, in a couple of ways. So it can be transmitted through through droplets, so through respiratory secretions, and it, yeah, you know, <laughs> everyone's imagining their subway trip right now. Yes, and exactly. The coughing person next to them. So that's a good reason to get the flu shot. Mm -hmm. um, but also, it can be transmitted on surfaces. So if you're also the subway pole. Exactly. Wonderful. So it's another lesson. Another great way to prevent the flu is really good hand hygiene and trying to prevent sort of moments where you're touching stuff that a lot of people touch and um, best hand hygiene that you can do. And then the other thing is, if you get sick. Mm -hmm. Don't wait. Um, it's worthwhile going to see a, a medical provider because there are medicines that you can be prescribed, especially if you have a weakened immune system that can help you uh, you know, get over the flu quicker and prevent some of the complications. I think that this is not um, a flu season that um, is that different from our other flu seasons so far. So there's been a lot of sort of conversation about this flu season, mainly because everything is active all at once. Like everybody has high flu activity, the whole country does, all of New York State has it, all of New York City has it. So I mean, what, what is a little bit different is that New York State is reporting uh, potentially higher hospitalizations. Well, in a city like New York, where there's so many people who are freelancers, and of course, for freelancers, time is money. So if they start to feel sick, they're going to, of course, say, well, you know, I'm going to power through, I'm going to go to work, I'm going to, I'm just going to get through it. When is the time to just go to the doctor? Man, you've got, taken the script from my patients, so listen. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, two hours to go to an urgent care or see your provider mm -hmm. is much better than five days in bed. So if you're a freelancer and you get the flu, 
and you're stuck not being able to do your business because you're stuck at home with fevers and shakes and feeling terrible, it's worth that extra little effort to reduce the duration of your flu symptoms by a little bit. I have to ask, um, if you don't have the flu, why is it that a cold can linger and start to feel and look, more importantly, to your coworkers like you have the flu? Cold viruses, flu viruses, they all can do something very similar, which is the inflammatory sort of stuff mm -hmm. that happens with an infection can linger on way past the infection. Okay. And so I think that what happens is people will get like a little viral bronchitis, very mild, and what happens is that lasts for a long time. So that cough that goes on for a long time mm -hmm. after a cold or a flu can be just a leftover of your immune system That's trying to fight that cold and flu away. All right, well, I think we'll leave it on the this too shall pass this note. This too shall pass. <laughs> All right, well, listen, Dr. Daskalakis, thank you so much for joining us and giving us some clarity through the fog of all the sneezing and the coughing about this season's flu. Thank you. Okay.